let's turn to uh, realignment. So since we last spoke, here is all the craziness that has happened. And that is we left you on Friday saying a lot of this could change over the weekend. And it did. So here's essentially what we have. The very latest is the ACC is perhaps trying to go after Stanford and Cal. Uh, before that, you had Oregon and Washington join the Big Ten. Before that, you had Colorado joining the Big 12. To me, it's pretty apparent. With Utah, Arizona, and Arizona State to the Big 12, yeah. too. And I, and I was going to mention I uh, missed some. But to me, it's pretty apparent that there's a there's going to be a power three and there might be a power four group of conferences for a little bit longer, but it feels like it's going to be a power three. And it may be a couple of years because the ACC is so tied into their contracts, the individual schools through another, how many years you might know, Caleb? It's 2036. It's insane. Yeah. So you may have a power four for a while, but it's, it feels a little bit like a power three given how I feel about the ACC. So what are your thoughts on the realignment before we get into the SEC? Should they do something, which I think you could certainly argue, but what's your take right now on what has happened in just a matter of a week, basically, if that. I'm going to tell you why I think the ACC is looking to add Cal and Stanford more than anything. It's that, I told you, uh, I think last week, and I said yesterday too, uh, that I, the ACC just needs one more school. Just one more ACC school needs to join the seven that want to break off, and then they can vote to kill the grant of rights agreement and to kill the payout. If the ACC can rush add Cal and Stanford, well, then all of a sudden you might need another school or two to vote to break that agreement. That's what I think is happening right now. Because I don't, look, it's very clear. Florida State wants out. We're pretty sure Clemson wants out too. I think UNC, NC State, Virginia, and Virginia Tech also want out. And so, and I think Miami wants out. I think all seven of those schools want out of the ACC right now. Let me, let me take a step back and, and help me provide a little bit of perspective for the listener that might not be familiar with the way the ACC is set up. So it's through 2036. So you can't leave without a massive financial penalty. Florida State just can't up and leave conference without a penalty that would make it undoable uh, unwarranted whatever the word is you want to use but suddenly if you don't have a conference anymore which is what you're talking about if you have enough teams that uh, can overturn that then if you don't have a a conference then there's no contract to be beholden to that's essentially what they have tried to do once and what they may try to do again so you think that they would go out and they would get Cal and Stanford just in hopes of being, we want out votes? Is that what you're implying? They get Cal and Stanford in hopes of still existing when these schools leave so they can still enforce the grant of rights agreement and the contract. So the grant and the grant of rights is even worse than the contract because the payout contract, if they join, I think the SEC or the Big Ten, I think one of them might actually work with Florida State to help pay that exit fee. But the ACC can literally block them from being any tell of the games until 2026. They have the entire rights to the schools. Well, a couple of quick notes that I want to throw out there. And that is one, I said the Big Ten was absolutely idiotic for getting UCLA and Southern California. Now that they've got more Western schools, I don't think it's idiotic. I can make, I think it can make them exceptionally strong to have a Big Ten West and a Big Ten East, not like they currently have. And I think there's something to be said for that <clears throat> because it will limit the travel cost of, let's say, um, Southern California's women's basketball team having to go to Rutgers. There were a lot of travel arrangements that didn't make any sense. If you can limit that by having divisions, I think you're on to something. So kudos to the Big Ten for making what I thought at the time was a stupid move and actually turning it into something that I think is pretty good for them. Kudos to them. Kudos to the Big 12 for staying relevant because it looked like they were going to be the ones that imploded like the Pac-12 for a moment. But now they are relevant and they put together a pretty good conference um no grade yet for the acc because i i don't think they know how to get out of that as for the sec this latest 
round of realignment, how would you grade what they have done to this point, which is essentially stand pat after picking up Oklahoma and Texas and feeling really good about it? They're getting enough and they're in trouble. And I wrote about this yesterday. They're in big trouble. And let me tell you guys why. We're talking about power three now. Well, Dave, in an eat or be eaten world, which I said college football is, there's not just a power three. Eventually, there's a power one because the most powerful gobbles up everybody else. And here's what's happened. And I, I, I want people to pay attention to this here. The SEC is the best product by far in college football. They have seven of the top 10 revenue producing brands, half the top 25. They are by far the best brand. It doesn't matter what the brand is if you're not getting compensated for it. And because of the Big Ten TV deal, which I have fun, estimates Big Ten payouts per school for the original 16 before Oregon and Washington was 80 to 100 million. The SEC max up maxes out at 70 million with this, and they're stuck at 70 million probably for the next 10 years. Now, the Big Ten adds Oregon and Washington at a discount, meaning at least the other 16 schools are going to probably be paying out more than just 80 to 100 million. It'll at a minimum, I think, be 90 million for the original 16. What happens when Wisconsin's bringing in 90 million from the SEC, from the Big Ten, Tennessee's bringing in 70 million from the SEC, or even Alabama's bringing in 70 million from the SEC? Guess what? That's a lot of extra cash to spend on facilities, recruiting budgets, and NIL. Wisconsin all of a sudden can go into these SEC states and start recruiting and the Big Ten brand is going to start to get better. Dave, what happens in eight years when the SEC is still stuck in this bad TV deal and the Big Ten can renegotiate again for a better TV deal and payout? You might start seeing some SEC teams take a real hard look at maybe wanting to jump to the Big Ten. And I, I, that is blasphemous and crazy to say, but I'm telling you guys this right now, if the SEC doesn't make a move soon – they could be in big, big trouble. They could be on the phone right now to get Florida State, Clemson, and North Carolina to join. Well, I'm not ruling anything out, but obviously that would take a bunch of ifs where you're saying if, if the SEC had interest. If any SEC team had interest in moving from the SEC, that's a that would be a major shift. Because right now, um, unless you're just born and raised in – Big Ten country, you'd rather be in the SEC if all things were equal. So I'm not I'm not willing to say that uh, SEC teams would be willing to make that jump. But I will say this: what Caleb said is within the realm of possibility because there's eventually going to be one big mega conference, and what that mega conference, the way they're going to differ from, I mean, this is going to happen. I feel very certain. The way they're going to differ is that they are going to pay their players directly. There is no way from what I'm told recently that you can govern NIL, particularly when it comes to recruiting. There's no way that I can't say, Caleb Calhoun, you are a five-star tight end. I need you in my program. I'm going to promise you um, $100 million throughout your career, and you will make that. If you show up on campus and that first payment's not made, what are you going to do? With the open transfer policy, you're going to pull uh, Jaden Rashad and you're going to get the H out of there, right? So I have no leverage. So I can make you that promise. And if I don't come through, then it hurts me in recruiting and I probably lose you. <clears throat> the other thing, when you talk about the difference in money, it's not just a difference of building facilities that might be ready in six, seven, eight years. It's money that can immediately go to a Dante Thornton. Um, if you if you want to pick other teams, you can. Uh, Jameer Gibbs at Alabama. And what's happening with a lot of those players is they're going to one school and they're saying, what can I get? I'm not saying Thornton or Gibbs specifically. They're going to the next school. What can I get? So <clears throat> to use Wisconsin, as you mentioned, they can get better. <clears throat> excuse me. They can get better, Caleb, a lot quickly, uh, a lot quicker than just building up facilities. They can get better by winning transfer portal battles like next year. Yeah. And you're, by the way, there's a reason, there's a reason Wisconsin fired Paul Chris and went after Luke Fickle. There's a reason Nebraska for Matt Rule. You're about to see some money shelled out to get some elite coaches into these schools, too, which is that that's the next step in this. And 
this is and this is why the SEC has to make a move. And Dave, by the way, we talked about the ACC. You want to know the most valuable coveted commodity in the ACC right now? Program? Yes. Uh, just program? Mm-hmm. In the ACC? Uh, most coveted, I would say, is North Carolina. I thought so, too. It's Virginia. And you can Tracy Morgan, that's crazy me, but <laughs> it's USA Today's expenses. USA Today every year releases the college revenue expenses for programs. Virginia is the highest ranked in revenue of any school not in the SEC or Big Ten. On top of that, Virginia is the one school that the SEC or Big Ten could add that it wouldn't conflict with congruency and it would be a new market. Because Virginia borders Kentucky and Tennessee, so it fits in the SEC. It also borders Maryland, so it fits in the Big Ten. So all of a sudden, Virginia is the most coveted. Well, Virginia is a is an AAU school, and right now the Big Ten is more appealing because of the payout. If the SEC, if, if the AC breaks apart, Virginia is going to the Big Ten, making it even more urgent that the SEC get Florida State and Clemson now, and like you said, probably North Carolina. But, I mean, they've got to get those schools in. They need to lock them in just to have enough powerful schools so they can make sure they can, they have leverage the next when the next round of negotiations happen. Going back, before we get to the top uh, single seasons in Tennessee cornerback history, going back to your possibility of SEC teams wanting out because of the financial agreement, I will say this. While I'm not ruling anything out, I think the SEC has a strong enough base of teams that they won't ever have to do that. I think the Big Ten has a stronger base of teams that if somehow, some way, the SEC got leverage over them, it's going to have to be a unified group thing where like the AL and NL, which we've referenced before in the Major League Baseball, they, they have to come together and say, we're going to do interleague play. <clears throat> so I don't think one conference is going to run it because of simple numbers. I think there are 36 to 44 teams that should be in a mega conference. And I think each one will have about half that, which will be about 16 to 18. So I'm not, I'm not saying that what you're, you're proposing can never happen, but I think both conferences have a pretty good foundation where they would be, they would have a seat at the table and not just get raided like the Pac-12 has. What if the Big Ten gives calls to nine, say eight or nine of the SEC teams? You know, the Tennessees, the Floridas. The, by the way, for Tennessee fans, don't worry. Tennessee, and you and I know this, Dave, Tennessee's always going to be in this mix. Whatever the powerful conference is, Tennessee's enough of a brand that they can yes. go to wherever conference they want. Um, but what happens if the Big Ten gives calls to Tennessee, Florida, Georgia, Alabama, and say, hey, you tired of this TV deal? You tired of splitting it with Vanderbilt, Missouri, and Kentucky? Why don't you come to the Big Ten? I'm just saying. Just saying it's possible. I'm not ruling anything out. Uh, I mean, what you what you said earlier is 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 pretty pretty aggressive, but I'm not calling it outlandish because I'm not ruling it out at all. 